Here we have three nodes set up in a virtual network. These three Linux nodes have been uh, created using a topology number five, uh, where nodes one and two are on one subnet, two and three are on a separate subnet, and node two is the router. Uh, this is the topology we have here. And what we're going to do is uh, send some data from one to three and back. And we're going to use a very simple program called Netcat, which allows us to create a simple either TCP or UDP connection. Uh, to send packets. So we'll demonstrate how Netcat works and use that to, uh, to do some analysis of how UDP and TCP work as transport protocols. We'll start with UDP first. So conceptually what we're going to do is we're going to have node 3 act as our server. So we'll say this is our server. This is our router, node 2. And we have our client node one. So Netcat allows is some software that allows us to run either a server or a client. So what we'll do is we'll run Netcat as a server on node three, and Netcat as a client on node one, and we'll send some packets between the client and server. And on the router node two, we'll capture those packets with TCP dump. So let's first start TCP dump on node 2. We need to be sudo to run TCP dump. sudo TCP dump. I'm going to capture on the first interface, interface 1. I don't want to convert addresses to names, so minus n option is used here. All the packets captured, I'm going to write minus w to some file. Let's call it netcat udp1.pcap. nc is short for netcat, we'll see in a moment. We'll use UDP as the transport protocol for this first example. So we start capturing, or we'll enter in our password network, and now the router is recording everything being sent. So on node three, which is gonna act as our server, we need to start a server application. This is not a web server, it's not a secure shell server or a file server, it's our own special server, which we create using Netcat. And NC is short for Netcat. With a server, we normally need to start the server and that listens on a particular port number. For example, a web server listens on port 80. A secure shell server listens on port 22. In our special server, we need to choose the server, the, the port number it will listen on. So we use minus L to say listen on a port number. And we basically need to choose a port number which is above 1024 and it's not used. I'm just going to choose 12345. It needs to be less than 65,000 because port numbers are 16 bits long. You can choose another number. And Netcat can operate in both TCP mode or UDP mode. I'm going to start it using UDP mode. So I will specify minus U as the option saying let's listen on port 12345 for UDP uh, packets. And let's start the server. It just sits there and waits for someone to contact it. So it will do nothing until we start the client. So let's go to the client, node one. And we want to start netcat in client mode. And the way that we do that, netcat in client mode, well, Let's just, don't forget, minus U, we want to use UDP. Both the client and server both need to use UDP. If, um, if we want a TCP, we could just omit the minus U option. We'll do that later. And the client is started by specifying which server we want to connect to. We specify the IP address of the server. Node 3 was .2.21 and the port number of the server. One, two, three, four, five. So note, with a server, we start, we use the minus L option. With the client, we specify the server IP and port number. And we start the client, and now we can send data. So the basic idea with Netcat in this mode is whatever we type should be sent. Hello, node three. So I typed it in on node one. Data was sent to node three, containing the string hello node 3. Maybe we'll want to send 
a, a secret, like a password, so they can then encrypt. So my secret is sent from node 1 to node 3, and hopefully only node 3 sees that, and then we just say goodbye. So Netcat just allows us to send data, which is whatever we type. And I just uh, created some dummy data for this example. Let's close the client and server. So I'll control C on the client, stop it. And then we'll also close the uh, server. We'll need to close it separately because uh, with UDP, there's no concept of a, a connection. We'll see it's different with TCP shortly. So they've stopped. Now the idea is that on node 2, we were capturing. What we're going to do now is stop that capture. And it says that six packets were received and captured. And what we'll do is open that capture. Let's just see it's there, the, the PCAP files there. We'll open that in Wireshark. And let's go. To do that, we'll use FileZilla, connect to node 2, and we can download the capture file, and then open that capture file in Wireshark. So in our captured packets, we note that there are some UDP packets and some ARP packets. We know ARP is used for uh, address resolution. Let's hide those details. I just want to focus on the UDP packets. And one of the very powerful things of Wireshark is that we can filter out packets. All right, in this case, we only have six. It's easy to see the four UDP packets. But when you have thousands or millions of packets listed, it's important to use filters to display the packets of interest to you. And one filter we can do is we at the top we simply type in UDP, meaning show all the packets which are UDP. And that shows us just these four packets. And let's look. So at different times, 0, 15 seconds, 23, 33 seconds, these four packets have been sent from node 1, address 192.168.1.11, to node 2. 192.168.2.21 and so we have the four packets. What is the structure of these packets? If we look at the first packet, it's a frame 54 bytes. It contains an Ethernet header. We're sending from node 1 to the router. So the source will be node 1. The destination Ethernet will be node 2, the router. The Ethernet frame contains an IP datagram and source is node 1, destination node 3. So when the router receives it, it needs to forward it on to node 3. Inside that IP datagram, the transport protocol is UDP, the user datagram protocol. In the IP header, the protocol field tells us what the transport protocol is. So here it says it's UDP. And in the UDP header, there's a source port. The source port is assigned to the client application. So when we started Netcat on the node 1, the operating system assigned a port to that application. And it's usually uh, done uh, from a range of uh, port numbers. In this case, it got 39,979. If you do it, you'll probably get a different one. If I do it again, I may get a different source port or client port. But the destination port was what we specified the client should connect to on the server, this 12345. The length of the uh, UDP, uh, the length of the packet, 20 bytes, and there's also a checksum. UDP is very simple. Essentially, it allows you just to send packets with no checking of, of errors. There's no retransmissions. There's no flow or congestion control which TCP has, it just sends packets and hopes they get there. What is the data? Well, very simple. The data, this hexadecimal values, well, in ASCII, it's the message that we typed in. Hello, space, node 3, 
and the last character is the, the end of line character when I pressed enter. So that was the first message from when I typed in the first line. Then in the next message, again from cl client to server, node 1 to node 3, that essentially the same, same destination port number, same client port number, the source port, the data is the second string or, or uh, characters that I typed in. And the third message and the fourth message. And now the, old, the UDP packets. When I close the connection, I had to do it separately on the client and server. There's no concept of UDP maintaining connections. It's connectionless. Note that the idea in these messages is that I send some super secret uh, message from node 1 to node 3. We see from a security perspective, it's very easy for a node in the middle of those two, in this case the router on node 2, to intercept and to view the contents of those messages. So that highlights the key point. If you want to communicate between endpoints in the internet, if you don't use encryption, then assume that any intermediate device, routers, modems, uh, uh, network switches, can potentially capture those packets and easily see the contents. So that leads to the, one of the main reasons we use encryption in network communications to stop intermediate devices from uh, viewing the contents of those messages. Let's illustrate what happens very simply. We have node 1 sending to node 3, but via node 2. There were just four UDP messages. So quite simply, this was a UDP message. And the contents, I'll just write data 1 which was the hello node 3 string and then the second one and the four messages were sent via the router to the server data 2, data 3 and data 4 so that's a quick summary of the exchange of messages in this case what we see is that UDP is a very simple protocol when you create data to send, it is sent in a UDP datagram or packet. And there's no acknowledgements coming back. There's no setting up of a connection. Uh, there's no retransmissions if there's an error. We'll see next when we look at TCP that TCP provides those services, but UDP does not. To finish on UDP, to start the server we use netcat and the minus u option tells us to use udp as the transport protocol minus l option says start netcat as a server and listen on a particular port start the server first then to start the client again the minus u option to specify use udp as a transport protocol and specify the ip address of the server and the port number of the server then we can send data and it will be received.